Hi everyone, it's Carolyn here to share another channeled message from the Light Keepers, a group of angelic beings I channel for your awakening and ascension journey support. Today I tried something different. I had a kind of a calling to just do a, what I would call a live channel. So I just turned the camera on and I asked to channel through a topic. And then I knew what the topic was going to be, but I didn't know what their channel was going to be, but I also knew what I was going to talk about. So I asked them for something accompanying the topic. And oh my gosh, <laughs> kind of surprised me because it came through. So I, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I tried to be as smooth as possible. It's a little different when I'm actually channeling in a camera. I've never done that before. Uh, usually what I do is I record or I will just write them down and then I will read those to you. So this is a first and I hope you enjoy it. It was just something I wanted to try. So today's topic is kind of a combination of things. It's about staying high vibe as we are as light workers, and we kind of grow into that, but also ensuring that we, in doing that, don't become obsessed with the awakening. And I'll talk about what I mean by that because I have lately realized that as I step away from anything that has to do with the awakening journey or spirituality in general or you know this whole journey we're on i grow in anxiety i don't think that's what's supposed to happen <laughs> and we're going to talk about that because i know that's not what is supposed to happen i do believe it's part of the journey where most of us to one degree or another are going to cross that part of the path so today i have six things to share with you where you can still maintain your high vibration, but also break out of what might be some kind of um, feeling as though we're getting obsessed with the awakening. So I will talk in detail about that. I'm gonna give you some of my experiences too. So with that, welcome today. I'm Carolyn Zeiser. I'm a channel, I'm a distance energy healer, and I'm a spiritual awakening mentor. And I offer these channels for your awakening and ascension journey support. So thanks for joining me today. And if you're interested below in the description box, I have a video on flow, how to create it in your body for health and wellness, because it's so essential to our health in the awakening journey and in the human journey. So click below and it'll also lead you to some more free content on a regular basis. So with that today, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the channel, flip on over to that, which I've already recorded, and then I'm gonna go ahead and give you my takeaways on it and some tips that you can use for your journey when you start feeling like this is all I'm thinking about and all I'm doing and something isn't quite feeling right about doing that anymore, but still maintaining that high vibe. Enjoy the channel. Oh, you are our high vibe tribe too. And now we want to make clear to you that in your way you'll find at times spiritual awakening can be a obsession we find. This is not what we want for you. For as you travel this journey, it is about the beauty of life that you find in front of you, incorporating these times we say, but not obsessing and living only this way. For you are human, and we say too, here to enjoy your life that you make of it. For you, and only you can do this, we say, and yes, we'll be by your side in your way. But reach out and bring into the beauty of the high vibration that the awakening has brought to you and back into the life you have of the human that can be so grand. Step out and do something new. Find your way in the neighborhood too. Reach out to those who are not awakening we find and share the light, your starlight so divine. Keep in mind, every day we say too, it is not about only the awakening we say too, for you are the light brought in. Carnate we say, all of the divineness shining through you today to share with others, oh, in time, and yes, we know that at times you will be blind for all the beauty of the awakening we say too, and you will spend much time focusing all your efforts on we say too, and yet when we say today, that we wish for you a balance in your way. This is about living, we say too, in all ways of the awakening. And most importantly, being the human you are, we say too, of the divine light you now shine within and without to all those you begin 
to encounter in your day, we say, for yes, there are phases in the awakening, we say, and the early times, it is true. That is all one wants to do, is focus on the awakening that is in front of you. But now in the later days, as you maneuver through your awakening times, we say, it is for you here to share for the next wave, those coming your way and helping those who cannot find it too, the spark of themselves deep inside of them too. So know that as you travel the distance of the awakening in time, it will change and shift and yes, you'll find different ways of sharing the beauty of this time with the multitudes. Okay, so that's the Lightkeeper's channel on this topic. Again, I picked the topic and I asked them to comment. And so they brought that forward. And I have six things I want to talk about today with respect to the whole idea of moving through this awakening journey and feeling overjoyed with it and enjoying those early times and really moving into it. Now, the early times can be, you know, it's all different time frames for everyone. But the point is that's a, that's a phase of like the learning, the obsessive learning, the exploring, all of it. And it's all you want to do. It's all you want to do. And then what can happen, I have found, and this is not just me, is that it can almost become an obsession to the exclusion of wanting to do anything that, and I'll just say, is 3D. And that's not a criticism or anything. It's just a, how I describe you know, living in the human world. So I'm going to just call it 3D, okay? Not wanting to part participate. Now, that can be in the way we used to participate or at all. And then we immerse ourselves into the awakening in a way that can exclude our human life. Now, yes, we are in the process of rebuilding that human life in the way that is um, um, tied to the greater understanding of why we're here, of how we will choose to move forward with our lives. But I'm here to tell you, <laughs> It's, it's not designed to be at the, at the exclusion of the human life. And so many of us, me included, can just say, we're tossing that all away and honestly want to go crawl in a hole and just, you know, not be involved with the rest of society. So what happens during a part of our journey is we typically, to one degree again or another, are going to want to reintegrate back into the 3D back into the, and when I say that, I'm talking about into hum, the human life of those who are not in this process. And yes, I know awakening people are scattered all over. So yeah, you're going to run into some of them, but typically we're running into people who have not yet processed through this journey. But there becomes a time where you're starting to realize, oh, something's up with how I feel. I might feel like I'm in a bit of a rut or you're a little stagnant or you're um, feeling as though um, you're doing the same thing over and over again. That there isn't that, I don't want to say spice of life, but I am kind of, yeah, no, spice of life. They're saying, yeah, they're saying, say that, say that. Spice of life because you, you really get that in the human world. There's so many beautiful things that are here for us to be able to enjoy that if we just focus on only the world of the awakening, we limit ourselves to a lot of the things that are joyful for us in the human experience. Now, during the awakening, we do shift and change as to what we enjoy doing. I'm not saying you're going to toss some things aside because you are, but then you all almost open up to realizing what the things are that you do enjoy and that you want to embrace. And then because of the awakening, you have a greater passion and desire for them and, and emotion for what is offered in the human experience. So we then begin to integrate our awakening vibration with the 3D experiences that, that are offered to us through being human. And so today I want to talk to you a little bit about Staying high vibe, moving away from the kind of the, many of us can start feeling that obsessiveness about the awakening and limiting the anxiety that we can feel when we do start wanting to do something other than awakening stuff. Because I have gone through anxiety of turning around and I don't want to say turning my back, but 
not spending as much time on awakening subject matter and then going off and doing other human 3D activities with no mindset with respect to the awakening. Now, what I will say to you is, you know, you can't really do that. Like it's become a part of who you are and how you act and behave. So that part's still with us, right? But the mindset of constantly thinking about it and that everything we do has to do with that. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. Whether you've been through a very long period of time like that, a short period of time, or you've been in it all the time like I have, okay? So recently, I feel like I've had another awakening <laughs> in a different way. One that is integrating this awakening me, okay, with the human me, all right? And integrating it to the point where now, and I've done the figure eight for you guys before, that we are moving up in vibration and that we bring that into our human life, okay? You can just say 5D and higher, into 3D because that's how we're living, right? We're not leaving anytime soon the human life as such. So we're bringing those energies in to have that experience. So this is about not having that anxiety and that concern and worry that that you're leaving that for a moment in time, not fully focusing on that, and you're going to go do other 3D things. And then you start integrating it. This is what has happened to me lately, and I've had extreme anxiety, although you might not know it, over doing this and setting aside the things I do day to day. However, it is extremely important that we do this because otherwise you're gonna get burnt out. You're gonna get burnt out. Particularly those of us who are creating out of the awakening, okay? And that can be a business, it can be a hobby, it can be a sideline, it can, whatever it is. Whether you got a blog online, YouTube channel, it doesn't have to be anything like that, but I'm just giving you some examples. If you've created out of that, you can start getting super obsessed, super obsessed about that. And what we don't want to have happen is burnout because you're still human and that can happen. Okay, so we're going to talk about six things today that can assist you in being able to integrate into your life so that as you are moving through this journey, you don't have a wall that you run into like I did, okay? So first of all, take a break online. Now some of these may seem super simple and obvious, but we don't do them, right? We do not do them until somebody says, you know what, why don't you try this? But then you gotta be disciplined, okay? Take a break from being online, literally move away from it. So last weekend, and I've done this before, but it is so uncomfortable and I was super anxious about this and that's my problem, but for three days, I wasn't online. I'll just say for the most part, I think I answered a couple emails, all right? So this was a Friday, Saturday, actually Friday, Saturday and part of Sunday. And I had family in town and I thought, you know what? I'm not gonna come home after an evening out or a morning out doing whatever we were doing and spend a couple hours online doing my work, whatever that might mean, all right? Doesn't mean I don't enjoy it, it means I need a break and I need to see if I can consecutively have a break of days. Oh, I was so anxious about that. It was really interesting. Now I have a, I have a business, so that's important for me to keep up with, but this can have to do with anybody going through this. How often, forget that I have a business, how often was I online the first couple of years of my awakening? Oh, every waking moment, you know, trying to find community, trying to learn. And I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I'm saying that this is one of those things where you're getting, when you're getting to that point of feeling the feelings that I'm talking about, that idea of feeling like you're wanting to potentially reintegrate yourself. You're feeling there's another move coming. You're feeling a bit, um, um, maybe off your game with respect to you know what you're doing day to day do you feel obsessed with it and really evaluate that okay so stepping away from online and taking a break or limiting your time online with respect to awakening information like anything we're human and we can create our own obsession with the awakening to the exclusion of everything else but people need us and the world needs us in whatever way that means for you, whatever kind of presence you want to make. So this is about the idea of, again, tips to help you reintegrate 
as you're starting to feel that you're becoming maybe obsessed with this. It feels like times are changing for you and you're needing to basically reintegrate because there is kind of this cocooning phase where you go into this and you do all this learning and exploring. So get away from the online because you may have to force yourself to do this as you're starting to feel this way, okay? Take a break because we can get super obsessed about what we see online, all the energy updates, all the energy reports, who's saying what. Just go within, let yourself take a break and start answering some of your own questions. Maybe you're gonna start feeling some of that for yourself, which most of us do as we move through this journey. Another thing I have found extraordinarily helpful, and I did not understand the power of this previously, but around Christmas time of this past year, I was feeling like I needed new hobbies. I was really itching to do new things. One was play the violin. I haven't played an instrument ever. Um, number two was I wanted to make candles. I don't know. I'm not a really a crafty person. I also wanted to start doing more things around the house to um, kind of interior design, I would say. And I pick little projects on occasion to do that. But I haven't done that in years. So I started to do things like I did. I started making candles. Oh, my gosh. I had a focused effort on something else. I have never had so much joy. This is so simple. And there's a part of me that said, wow, Carolyn, this is a problem. You have been so focused on your awakening journey, you know, and kudos to me, I guess, right? Kudos to us all. But again, I'm going back to, we eventually come back into that flow, into that balance of bringing in the awakening. And that's what I'm talking about today. So being able to reintegrate into just understanding there are other things that I do enjoy. Like I'm reading books now too. I wasn't doing that. And they're not awakening books. Okay, they're, they're, I am, I will admit, one of them's on energy. But the point is, is it's outside of this journey. And yet everything that we learn in the awakening can be applied to everything else that we do. So I'm reading books now. I actually am making candles, which was super fun. And this focused effort on something different, oh my gosh, you gain such a great clarity. It's almost like you clean up any kind of, um, obsession that you might have with the awakening journey um, that is carrying over a period of time and you're not able to kind of reintegrate back in to to share that because when we stay in our insular community that doesn't allow us to share the things that you know we are um, taking into ourselves that shifts and changes that we are making so being able to just get my focus off of the awakening journey for a period of time refreshed me to no end. It's been a beautiful thing. And to create something different, to create, that's part of this journey is to be able to create. And so out of that, I'm creating candles where I'm actually infusing crystals in them and um, putting intentions in. And so we do carry our awakening journey and things we've learned into that like I have with my candles and so when I create these I've imbued an energy into them and how beautiful is that but it's totally different you're creating something different so picking a new hobby something you have not done in some time if you're feeling that itch that kind of like uh, I'm kind of getting a little stuck in just doing the one thing of the awakening I need more jazz in my life. I want to pull in some more of the human experience into my life. And when you do that, the things that you choose to do are going to be amplified by the fact that you're going through awakening. So just try this when you're ready for it and just know it will happen. It'll bring, it'll make life so much more bright and beautiful when you're imbuing the awakening into the things that you've chosen to do now after your awakening, the new things that you're looking at doing and or that you're bringing back into your life that you might have set aside. It's like a new light has been offered into them. Here's some other examples of things you might want to do that take focused effort and really will take your mind away from doing the one thing that you do or the thing you do with respect to um, focused all day long on the awaken. Knitting is amazing. It will make you focus on knitting and it's very meditative as well knitting's a great thing gardening planting seeds watching them grow really gardening and you know getting your your spring plants ready um, if you've never done that before try it even if you have an apartment where you don't have an outdoors you can do windowsill plants potentially you know find something like that to do grow something create something out of that again you might be surprised what happens you're going through awakening the energy that you've brought in 
How exciting is that when you're growing something? Because guess what? You're going to share your light. But you're doing it in a very different way. Playing an instrument. Oh my gosh. What is the deal with the violin? I've been obsessed with the violin for a while. What? I decided to rent one. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not teaching myself. I'm just screeching around that I had to touch this thing. And I'm not in a position to do lessons, but I'm going to tell you right now, the mere fact that my brain had to do something different and try to look at notes and read and understand what they were trying to tell me, even for that moment in time when I rented that violin, it made a huge difference for me. So explore. What are the crazy things you want to go do? Go do them. You're going to bring a whole different vibration into the activity because you're going through awakening and it will help you have better balance. So as we go through this awakening journey, again, as I've said, we find ourselves immersed in it. That's all we want to do when we're in one phase or another, but we can stay there too. And that is not what the awakening is about. It's about reintegrating. So these are steps you can take to start reintegrating into some of the other things that you may enjoy, that you may want to do. Now, a lot of the things I've mentioned right here are solitary. That's perfectly fine. Do what you want to do, but do other things. Start finding things that you are interested in doing that'll break you out of kind of what that, that obsession over that. And then that'll break out of that anxiety when you do go do something different, you're not going to have anxiety anymore because you've now built that back into your life, into your awakening journey. The other things that we have the opportunity to do in the human journey. Now, here's another thing. Taking a break from the awakening in a wholly different way. So here's what I'm considering and I really would suggest, and I'm, I'm hoping to do a video on this after I actually do this, assuming I do. But I think next week, I'm going to be going to a monastery for a retreat. I've been wanting to do this. And I think I'm probably going to stay three nights. But here's the point. No online or very minimal. Um, quiet solitude. There's no talking. And introspection. Being able to do things that I wouldn't do normally because I'm probably online most of the time with what I do day to day, right? And I love what I do. But the thing is, this is what we're talking about is reintegrating this back into a human life and being able to, being able to have a bit more balance. And we, when you do choose to go do those human things, <laughs> which there are a plethora of them offered to us in the human life, that you don't feel anxious about it because that's miserable. And I have had so much of that where when I do go out to do something, like I said this weekend, I was anxious. I don't want to feel that way. I want to enjoy my human life, but I want to bring in the awakening and enjoy it all together. So that's where I'm at in my journey. So what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go spend some contemplative time just to be able to write, to read books, because I'm not doing a real great job of that. And I'm going to do something different. That whole idea of literally spending three days in total solitude with not 10,000 projects that I could do and sparse conditions and no talking. As you know, I like to talk. Oh, well, this is going to be interesting, but it's new. It's something that is going to help me grow as well as try new things. So this is another way. Consider something different, like some kind of little trip. Maybe it's not a retreat like I'm doing that is more extreme. Take a trip and just go somewhere. Like I've always said, go to the next town over, even if, you know, it's just a 20 minute drive go to something different because we can get so stuck in our day-to-day -day ways of being during the awakening journey because we do get very focused on it. And I'm not saying toss that away. Please don't misunderstand me. This is about integrating in to the human life. It's like this. This is how we want to end up ultimately because we're bringing our light back in and using it in whatever way makes sense for each of us. And it's all going to be individual and unique. And so consequently, this is about not feeling anxious about when you start doing that, okay? And being able to still stay high vibe and not feel like, oh my gosh, I'm um, cheating on the awakening journey because it will be there for you. So one of the things that I think is probably most helpful for us to rebalance ourselves is get out in nature, okay? Do a hike. For me, I mean, you can do whatever you want. Choose whatever you want that works for you, but something about hiking and getting out physically in the woods, in the prairies, in the mountains, in the streams, there is something different that takes us out of our head. 
Okay, now when I say get out in nature, don't just do it and keep, you know, like walk on by and not notice things. Really make, pull the attention into noticing what is there, the detail, what has changed since your last walk or hike, um, or what is it you notice. Sometimes what we're going to have to do is make a concerted effort to do that. We have to actually consciously tell ourselves, all right. I'm going to look at all the detail that I walk by because guess what? Lots of times we can get so wrapped up in our heads that we miss everything we walk by, even though we have good intention to be out in nature taking a hike. <laughs> and then you wonder when you're done, wow, what did I just do? I was in my head the whole time. So again, reaching out into nature, really becoming a part of it will release so much from you. It also assists clearly with releasing anxiety. So those are that's another nice way for you to be able to bring in um, the opportunity of what the human life offers us. And of course, a lot of us during the awakening are feel, feel very drawn to nature. So that's another piece of that, that you know we're gonna integrate into our awakening journey, but also as part of our, our human journey and can assist you so much with not getting super obsessed as well as like primarily those anxious times when we do step away from the awakening and we don't have that chance. And as I speak, too many things. The fifth thing is keep your self-care practices going. I don't think I need to go through the detail of all of those. I'll just briefly mention them. And I'll mention the ones that I usually recommend. Things like meditation, diet, exercise, um, energy clearing, uh, which can include Epsom salt baths, um, saging, you know, whatever way works for you. Um, uh, you know, habits, ensuring that you have, you are watching the habits that you have. So those are some of the things that, you know, we always want to keep self-care at a foundational level. That's part of this awakening journey and then helps launch you forward. So continuing to do that as we move forward is very important because as we integrate some of those human activities that um, we may want to choose to do, you kind of have to watch what some of those are. So, you know, you, you can really get wrapped back up in that whole thing if you were... Um, you know, out partying a lot and doing that. So, you, so you, you know, you want to be careful about that if you've worked on that. But the point is, is you can reintegrate some of these things. And I'll use my example because the last one, number six, is be human. We want to be human still, okay? Go dance and have fun. This weekend, oh my gosh, in the three nights that I actually just let it go and really wasn't focused on much of anything other than the primary practices, again, the self-care as the foundation, meditation, all of that, Oh my gosh, I went dancing. I went dancing and I love disco. I think I've told you that before. My sister and I, we spent an entire hour with the dance floor to ourselves just dancing. I mean, we were sweating. It was crazy. We had so much fun. But the point is, is I wasn't doing any of this stuff. I wasn't doing this. I wasn't out there. I, I thought, oh, well, I'm feeling too insular to do anything like that at all, which I used to love to do. And now... I said, no, we're gonna go do this. It felt so good. It felt like I reintegrated a part of me that I had lost because I had not focused on doing anything out with other people in a in a larger group. Now, a lot of us still don't want to do that. And I'm just giving the examples that work for me. But the point is you're gonna find your way. Maybe it's just going to a coffee shop where a small community of people are and you're able to just enjoy sitting in a quiet space with other people. So you're all gonna find your way on this, but these are six things that I use and am using, I should say, because I'm really currently in the throes of this, of being able to integrate this amazing awakening journey that I've had over the last years into the human life that we have so that we're not missing out on the things that we still can enjoy and make part of our awakening journey because we are bringing that awakening light into the human life and whoever we encounter in those things that we go do and the beauty that we offer to ourselves when we do reach out and start doing things that we've wanted to do that are inspirational. So know that during this journey, we can reach a point where we feel like something is ready for us to reintegrate in whatever way, to whatever degree that means for you. And these are six ways to start getting yourself reintegrated back into a human life in the sense of enjoying things that maybe you've set aside because we've been so focused on the awakening. Again, we are here to participate in whatever way that means for each of us to one degree or another. So I hope this has helped you a bit. 
Think about where you're at on your journey and can you use a little bit of that spice from the human life to now start bringing back into your awakening journey so that you're blending back into a fully new life for you so you can also enjoy the full human experience. So I will keep you posted on my retreat that I may be going to next week. And if I go, you will be getting a video on this. I am sure of it. So with that today, I so hope you have enjoyed this video and taken a little bit of something away for your own journey. So check out purplerainhealing.com for all of my services where I channel prolifically in all of them for your awakening and ascension life journey. And with that today, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in the next video.